Ken here with you again. This is DC lesson five, part C, with uh, resistance and resistors. So about this particular lesson, we're going to explain the resistor color code. We're all going to explain how to measure resistance with an ohm meter. And at the very end, we're going to do a summary. So the contents of this from the textbook, if you're following along in the textbook, section 5.3 and 5.4. So resistors have color codes. There are three band resistors, four band, five band, and even sometimes six band resistors. And by looking at the resistor color codes, we can determine what the resistance or the nominal resistance value is. And you can see that this particular first one on the top there is a four band. So there's one, two, three, what we call color bands. And then the fourth band is the tolerance. And you can see the gap is a fair bit bigger. So that's how you can tell. You've got three bands close together, then a space to a bigger gap. So you know the bigger gap is tolerance and the tolerances tend to have um, different colors. So if there's no color, it's 20%. If it's silver, it's 10. And if it's gold, it's five. The first digit is just a digit number represented by the color. The second one, again, is just a digit number represented by the color. The third one in this particular case is the multiplier. And we'll explain how that works in a moment. Then on a five band resistor, we've got one, two, three, four, and there's our fifth band. And again, the first three represent the digits of the number of the size of the resistor. The fourth is the multiplier and the fifth is the tolerance. So here's our basic color code chart. And you can see for our typical three and four band resistors, four band, one, two, three, and four, is the resistor at the top. At the bottom is our five, one, two, three, four, and five. So our colors are simply black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, and white. So they are the 10 colors that make up the basic 10 digits, so there's 10 colors there, numbering from zero through to nine. And then on the bottom, we have some special multipliers, sometimes used for gold and silver, as well as our tolerances, which again, over here, vary with color as well. So our first, our second, and our third digit, you'll notice that multipliers, this is a big thing to get right. So if it's a black, you multiply by one. So it is just the number. If it's brown, you multiply by 10. If it's red, you multiply by 100. So on and so forth. Up to violet, which is you multiply by 10 million. So we're just going up by a factor of 10 or times 10, times one, times 10, times 100, times 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million, 10 million are the multipliers. So here's some examples of the color codes. So all we're doing is we're basically interpreting the colors on the resistors. So here we've got a brown, a green and a red so it's one for green for brown i should say 
5 for green, so 1, 5, multiply by 100, so we get 1500 0, 0, or 1500 ohms, which we would probably express as 1.5k ohms. And the gold band on the end is our tolerance, and that tells us that we're within 5%. So the nominal value is 1500, but we could be up by 5% on that actual value, or we could be down by 5% on that value. The next one along, um, we've been nominated brown, black, and black. So it's one zero, giving us 10. The multiplier is a multiplier of one, so one, 10 times 10 is one. So, and our tolerance is plus or minus 10%. So this resistor is 10 ohms plus or minus 10%. Our final three is violet, sorry, yellow, then violet, then gold, and then gold again. So this tells us that we're at 4, 7, and the gold means we multiply by 0.1. So we're going down by a tenth. So it's 4, 7, in other words, 0 0.47. So we move the decimal point one place to the left. And we're at 4.7 ohms, and the gold, our second gold band tells us we're plus or minus 5% on that. Our next two examples, we've got uh, six band resistors, and uh, we've got orange, blue, black, yellow, red. Get my pen up. Our orange tells us three. Blue is 6, black is 0, yellow is times 10,000, and the red is 2%. So we have 3, 6, 0, and we have four, z four zeros after that. So 1, 2, 3, 4. That's how I like to do it. I like to say three six zero and then the multiplier tells me how many more zeros I need to add since the yellow represents four we're going to have to add another one two three four resistors to O's to it giving me 3.6 million ohms the blue so the next one is blue, grey, black, giving us 680. A red means we've got to add two zeros to it. So 680 plus another zero and another zero gives us 68,000 or 68K. And the brown out the back says plus or minus one. I'm sure that should have been a 1. So we have a thing called the E12 preferred resistor values. You can't buy resistors in exactly every value you might like. So we have preferred value ranges. So on the left hand side here we have the decades. So the 0.1 resistors, the 0.1s, the 1s, the tens, the hundreds, etc., etc., etc. You'll notice we've bolded. Whoops. We'll go back again. We've put in bold this particular. I'll get my screen pointer up. This particular screen line is in bold, just a one times. So you can get a one ohm resistor. That's fine. The next size up is 1.2 then 1.5, then 1.8, so on and so forth, right up to 8.2. You'll notice when we're going down in size, we simply move the decimal place one point to the left or two points to the left. And when we're going up in value in this direction, we're doing exactly the same, except we're now moving the decimal point to the right. So those are the E12 preferred resistor values. So if you uh, want to get a... Uh, 
say a 2k resistor the nearest you're going to get as an independent resistor is 2.2 but if you want exactly 2k then you're going to have to buy two of the 1k's and put them in series so if you want an exact 2k you'll need to buy two 1k resistors and put them in series so by putting these preferred values in what we call series parallel combinations you can actually make pretty well every resistance value you would ever like to need so how do the E12 ranges cover all the values and uh, we've just mentioned that that uh, they have percentages and tolerances so let's have a quick look at how the tolerances work so this first resistor here is 82 ohms plus or minus 10 percent so if I take 82 and take 10 percent of it which is of course 8.2 ohms is 10 percent sorry should have put that in ohms is 10 percent if I subtract 8.2 from 82 I'll get 73.8 and if I add my 8.2 I'll get 90.2 so when you purchase this resistor or it comes from the supplier and it says that it's 82 ohms it could be anywhere between 73.8 and 90.2 because the tolerance was silver and that told us that it was 10% this 100 ohm in the middle here might make it a little more clearer to you again we're looking at a 10% tolerance so 10% of 100 is 10 ohms here we can do the maths without even thinking about it the lower end is 100 minus 10 equals 90 the top end is 100 plus 10 giving us 110 and finally we have a resistor here again at 10 percent 120 ohms so 12 ohms is equal to 10 percent isn't it so subtract 12 ohms you get 108 add 12 ohms you get 132 so this resistor at 120 ohms could be anywhere between 108 and 132 so the e12 resistor range is based on resistors with an accuracy of plus or minus 10 percent these 10 percent tolerance resistors give all the values you could possibly ever want from 73.8 ohms up to 132 odd ohms without any trouble at all um, these days we don't require students to actually learn the color codes I know them off the top of my head because I had to learn them by heart these days you can buy color code apps and uh, I downloaded a couple off the internet just to show you um, this this one up here I quite like you can either search by color you can search by resistance value you can search by uh, four five and six band resistors and you can search simply by color code information table um, there are some apps around that you can actually use your camera now take a picture and it will simply look at the colors of the resistor and tell you the value of the resistor so there's quite a few apps that you can now use on your phone to determine um, the value of resistors you can get the same apps also that run on your computer so we're now down to uh, measuring resistance resistance is measured with an ohmmeter which is just a, one of the functions normally of a multimeter so when measuring resistance make sure there is no voltage present at the measurement point that's very very important you will damage your multimeter if you stick it on volts into a live circuit avoid touching either probe particularly both probes because it's going to measure your body resistance as well as what you're measuring particularly if you're playing with reasonably high values of resistance your body will have an effect on the reading so first on analog meter there's a couple of adjustments we have to do on an analog meter some of them are um, 
are made permanently. So this one here, adjusting the mechanical zero. So it's a little adjustment knob here, and there's a little wiper arm in here. And you can mechanically make sure that the needle is sitting right hard on the zero physically. Then the next thing you need to do is to touch the two probes together and you're balancing out the resistance in the leads. So these leads have some resistance in them. And this resistor pot here. So you put the two together and it will deflect all the way over to one side and go right down to zero on that side. And you want to adjust it so that uh, it's right over the top of the zero. So using a multimeter, so in this particular case we've got a digital multimeter and we're measuring a 220 ohm resistor. So you can uh, see here on the digital meter, now the digital meter also does offer you an analog readout as well. So here's the digital component, pretty easy, 21.7 ohms, there's the ohms. But there's also a scale that slides up and down on most digital meters to also give you an analog representation. So you can tell whether this, the uh, voltage may be pulsing up and down or not quite as steady as you anticipated. So that little bar graph is quite helpful and again, we're obviously on the ohm scale. Um, the scaling on a digital multimeter is normally automatic. It's just a little microprocessor, a little computer inside, works out what the best scale is to display your resistance in. On an analog meter, this is not the case. So on analog meter, you have to select the ohm scale, and we always say start at the top, and then click down smaller and smaller until you get deflection somewhere in the middle of the meter. That's where your meter is going to be the most accurate. And then once you've got it most accurate, make sure you're right over and use the parallax mirror so you can't see the needle and then project up and read off the value. In this case, we're on times 10. So you can see here about two, two is what it's reading. And it's 2, 2 times 10, so it's 220 ohms. So we're reading off here at 220 ohms because we have a times 10 factor here, which is where our meter is selected at. So with an analog meter, you've got to make sure the meter itself is zero, that you've balanced out the leads to zero, get the right scale so you're measuring in the middle use your parallax mirror, measure off on the scale, and then remember to multiply by the multiplier where the selector knob is. So a little bit more involved when you're using an analog ohm meter compared to a digital ohm meter. So uh, I thought I'd also throw in some information about digital multimeter specifications. The meter you could see there was a Fluke 79.3 series and it has an accuracy around 0.4 percent at 220 ohms if you remember it was reading 220 ohms so uh, if we were reading 220 ohms then the accuracy would have been in this area here so we would have had an accuracy of 0.04 percent so very, very accurate meter. So chapter summary, or lesson summary, I should say. So lesson five summary from chapter five in the book. Uh, resistance of a conductor can be found R equals rho times length times area, where R is the resistance, rho or P is the resistivity in ohm meters. L is the length in meters, and don't forget the cross-sectional area is in square meters. So it's given to you in millimeters, 
you'll need to go from millimetres up to metres by going times 10 to the minus 6. Conductors such as copper and aluminium have positive temperature coefficients of about 0.004, which means their resistance increases by 0.04% for every 1 degree C change in temperature. Resistors are electrical components that range have a large range from metal uh, grid type unit surface mount devices. Uh, they're rated by their power and their resistance values. That's the big thing with resistor ratings. They have their resistance value, which obviously is important, but equally important is their power rating. Low power resistors have their resistors identified with a color code. The resistor color code is based on the color spectrum, but it starts at black and ends at white. The tolerance of resistors indicates the range of the resistance values that the resistor might actually have. So remember, plus or minus tolerances, the resistor value stamped or color coded is only the nominal value. Low power resistors are made up of either the E12 or the E24 standard ranges. Components that change resistance due to external influences include the value variable resistor. That means, you know, put some mechanical force on it and its resistance will change. Light dependent, light will change it. Thermistors, temperature will change it. And of course, varistors, that's variable voltages, will change its resistance. Using an ohm meter, ensure the circuit is dead, off, and only touch one metal probe on at a time, or avoid touching the metal probes altogether if you can. So that ends our final lesson in DC. That was uh, lesson five, part C. Hope you've enjoyed the theory of DC lesson five.